Good morning and welcome to Sunday, to the third Sunday in Lent as we continue our journey through our worship series called Dark Gifts of the Dark Wood. Um, as you might imagine, this Sunday we, things are a little bit different. We are doing a virtual worship service as the church has been closed for the, this week and next week. Um, the bishop has indicated that all churches in our conference will be closed for the next two weeks due to the coronavirus pandemic. We will see where we go from there. So we are doing a new thing. Um, in addition to the church being closed for worship services, most activities of the church are also uh, canceled. The River Hudson, Mid Hudson River Bells concert today is canceled our next week, as well as the opening of our thrift shop. Um, most meetings are canceled. However, our confirmation class will meet as scheduled from 3 to 5 today and also next Sunday up at the Elliott House. And we will <coughs> also be meeting with the book group over at San Diego's house. Um, but aside from that, most other activities are canceled. So we're doing a new thing. Here we go. We will join in our opening. Some of you have bulletins, others of you may not, but um, if you have a bulletin, you can follow along. There is a path, though it winds its way through darkness, we would choose to avoid it if we could. We awake to an unexpected calling. God says, come. There are gifts in the dark wood. Ancient civilizations and religions all metaphorically describe the voice of the divine coming through thunder and lightning. We often describe experiences of insight as a sudden flash, seeing the light or rock my world. Storms of life can make way for moments of insight, like the sun radiating in the clearing in the woods. It can offer us direction, helping us to negotiate life's path and see our unique place in the world. Our Lenten journey of discernment and introspection invites us to open our senses to, the thunderstruck, to be thunderstruck by rays of sunshine that peek through the midst of the clouds. There is a path. Though it winds its way through darkness, we would choose to avoid it if we could. We awake to an unexpected calling. God says, come. There are gifts in the dark room. You join me now in the prayer. Awesome love, enter our lives and open us to the gifts residing deep within the holy darkness of our lives. Form us as expectant people, watching for your presence among us. It comes through the quiet intuition of, or thunderous ahas. In your many names we pray. Amen. Our scripture for this morning comes from Job chapter seven, chapter thirty-seven, verses one through five. At this also my heart trembles and leaps out of its place. Listen, listen to the thunder of his voice and the rumbling that comes from his mouth. Under the whole heaven he lets it loose, and his lightning to the corners of the earth. After it his voice roars. He thunders with his majestic voice, and he does not restrain the lightnings when his voice is heard. God thunders run wondrously with his voice. He does great things that we cannot comprehend. And now we're going to enjoy a song that was prepared by our music director. I'm going to, the words will be on the screen here. Just guide me, thou great, O thou great Jehovah.
extend our thanks to our music director, David Spring, for preparing that musical piece this morning. It actually fits very well with our message. Here now a contemporary reading from Susan Orleans in her book, The Orchid Thief. There's a certain orchid that looks exactly like a certain insect, so the insect is drawn to this flower. It's double, it's soulmate, and wants nothing more than to make love to it. After the insect flies off, it spots another soulmate flower and makes love to it, thus pollinating it. And neither the flower nor the insect will ever understand the significance of their lovemaking. I mean, how could they know that because of their little dance, the world lives? But it does. By simply doing what they're designed to do, something large and magnificent happens. In this sense, they show us how to live. How, to, how the only barometer you have is your, is your heart. How when you spot your flower, you can't let anything get in your way. This morning I changed up my sermon at the last minute after um, going through it several times. I decided on a different approach. It seems to me that, as I recall my childhood growing up in Central America, that there is nothing more awe-inspiring than watching a thunderstorm roll in off the Caribbean Sea onto the coast. When we lived in uh, Central America, we lived in Costa Rica, and our house was up on a hill that overlooked the coastline, and there was jungle behind us. And every once in a while, we'd get a storm that would roll in near evening time. The storm would appear on the horizon, and the horizon would get black and dark and ominous. The storm would start to pick up as it got closer. The um, wind would pick up and the trees would start blowing around. Inevitably, the power would go out and we'd be plunged into darkness. And so, with nothing much to do, we'd go out and sit on the front porch and watch the storm as it rolled over. We would hear all kinds of sounds around us in different places. Sounds of wild animals in the jungle behind us, sounds of the wind blowing through the trees and underbrush, creaks and groans from the house, things that we couldn't identify. Our imaginations would run wild as we heard all these different sounds and wondered what was causing these sounds. Suddenly, in the darkness, we would see a flash of lightning crackle and arc across the sky. And for a brief moment, we would see the landscape ahead of us lit up. The ocean, the coastline, the hillside would light, light up under the lightning as though it was under a fluorescent light that was turned on and shut off almost immediately. But the image that we saw of the landscape out of that darkness would be burned into the retina of our eyes and into our memory and we would see it echo for a little while longer. Then we would start our count. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Boom! The thunder would roar through, and it seemed to echo from the ocean out and around behind us through the jungles and around the house and back out to the ocean where the, the lightning bolt had originated. We imagined that perhaps it was God speaking to us, that God was somehow beckoning us through the thunder towards the origin of the lightning, pointing us to a path forward. In uh, most ancient cultures and peoples, thunder and lightning were used to symbolically speak about the voice of the highest deity. In the Hebrew scriptures, we hear thunder and lightning used to metaphorically categorize the voice of God. In our reading from Job today, we hear 
example of that as we hear the author write, Listen, listen to the thunder of God's voice and the rumblings that come from his mouth. Under the, all the heavens, his lightning stretches to the corners of the earth. His voice thunders across the earth, and he does great things that we cannot comprehend. The author speaks of how the thunder and lightning act as metaphors for God's voice speaking to them. As we continued our journey through the dark wood, Eric Elms, the author of The Gifts of the Dark Wood, talks about how the importance is not so much the origin of the thunder and lightning, but the origin of God's voice and how we understand what it says to us through our intuition. We have all experienced those dark wood moments when we are out in, in the midst of the darkest part of the dark woods, when we are lost and we cannot see our way forward for the darkness. We don't know where to turn, we don't know where to go. We struggle just to find and discern any way to go. But the gift of the darkness in the dark woods is to be thunderstruck. For God will provide a flash of lightning that will illuminate the darkness and his voice will thunder around us beckoning us forward on a path, a path that may be only lit for a few seconds, and yet it remains burned into the retina of our eyes so that we can move forward with purpose. We struggle with so many things in our lives. The dark woods envelop us in darkness in many ways. It could be a vexing problem that has no easy answer, such as what do we do in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic? How do we conduct our lives? How do we adapt to this new situation, this new reality? Perhaps it is a conflict that we have been wrestling with and we are searching for a just resolution that eludes us, that provides healing and hope for all involved. Perhaps we've been wrestling with a, big, a vocational decision in our lives where we feel that our current job in this point of our lives has lost its meaning, has lost its, we've lost our joy and we struggle to, to just meet our obligations. Whatever the case, God offers us the gift of being thunderstruck that aha moment, that eureka moment where things light up in the darkness and we can see the path ahead. When things are all well lit, it's easy to see the path ahead, or perhaps it's not, but we see many choices that lie before us. We see a myriad of choices that lie before us. And we struggle, perhaps, to choose the right path. I don't know, that path over there, it, it looks wide and easy and nice and level. Much easier than that steep, narrow path over there. We find ourselves choosing the easy path, only to find that it may lead to a cliff, or it may lead to an impassable mountain. Or perhaps it just leads us right back to where we started. But in the darkness, we cannot see any path forward. And that is when we receive the gift of being thunderstruck by God. We hear God's voice in the thunder, and we see the lightning illuminating a path forward. God, God's lightning illuminates our path, and God's voice thunders through, saying, trust and follow me. Come down.
down this path, the one path that I've illuminated before you. We may not get out of the dark woods completely, but we can at least move a few steps forward with purpose on the path as God continues to guide us forward a little at a time. As we move forward, we learn to trust in God that there will be more flashes of lightning to illuminate our way, more thunderous voices speaking to us, encouraging us forward as we continue to move towards our destination. In my own life, I've wrestled with being in the dark woods vocationally. I got to a point where as an aeronautical engineer, I had lost my joy in my job and felt like I was just going through the motions. I, I wondered what my purpose was in continuing. And I felt like I was in the dark wood. I didn't know which way to go, which way to turn. And that was when God spoke to me through his thunderous voice, his lightning illuminating a path forward for me as he called me into the ordained ministry as an elder in the church. I began to take with great trepidation a few steps at a time, moving down that path, learning to trust God as I went. God that never, never showed me more than I needed to know on the path, and I had to learn to trust that the things that lie beyond my sight, I would have to wait until I needed to know, and God would let me know then. As I moved forward, I discovered blessing upon blessing as I moved down the path towards ordination and becoming an elder in the church. It was one journey of trust and journey of discovery of who God was calling me to be and the path that that would lead me. Now, some 17 years later, I still find myself in the dark wood, but I've made progress and I trust in God that no matter what happens, I will find my way along as God continues to guide me. What are your dark wood moments where the darkness seems so oppressive and you seem lost and cannot find a way out. Have you watched for the lightning from God and listened for the thunder of His voice as He indicates to you the path forward, as He invites you to take a few tenuous steps along the path that He has illuminated for you? Trust in that voice that you hear thundering and in the path that God lights with his lightning. For it will lead you to a place of blessing and a place of fulfillment and healing. I invite you to take that first step and go where God leads you. For you will surely be blessed. Amen.
things are different now in our country and in the world. We pray for all those who have been affected by the coronavirus, for families who have been in quarantine, for those who have lost loved ones to this new illness. We pray that the doctors and nurses who are working on treatments and a vaccine may come up with help soon. We continue to pray for our, our elected officials that they may guide and lead us through these difficult times, making the difficult decisions on whether or not to keep venues open or closed, whether to cancel events. Lord, we pray that in the midst of all this change and, and dealing with this virus, that we may not lose sight of our need to help one another, to care for one another, and to do the things that we can to help each other along this new path that we are walking. Whether it be to get groceries for someone who cannot get out, to simply call or check in on someone, to send a card, to give a phone call. Lord, help us to do the things that we can to enable each other to overcome the anxiety of this time and to put our trust in you that you will guide us through. We pray for those on our prayer list, for those who have been ill, especially those who have been in the hospital and, or are in the hospital now. We lift healing prayers for all of them and ask that your Holy Spirit would be upon them to bring wholeness to their lives and recovery. And now, O oh Lord, we lift our prayer to you, trusting in you to guide us to, through our lives. And so we pray the prayer that your Son Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into evil, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite us to receive this closing blessing for this morning's worship. You have a place in this world, a place where everything comes together in your body and you disappear into a seamless whole. Get over whatever shortcomings afflict you and inhabit the world, this world with your fullest self. May the spirit of the living God made known to us most fully within life's darkwood go before you to show you the way Go above you to watch over you. Go behind you to push you into places you may not necessarily go yourself. Go beneath you to uphold and uplift you. Go beside you to be your strong and constant companion. And dwell within you to remind you that you are surely not alone. And that you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you. 